I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. It's an important step toward recovery from the destruction of tropical storm Irene. President Obama has officially declared a major disaster in New York State, freeing up federal recovery funds. But at this point, the disaster declaration is limited. While federal money will be provided to help local governments rebuild roads, bridges, and other infrastructure in our region, only Ulster County is uh, currently included in the FEMA declaration that allows impacted home and business owners to register and apply for federal grants and low-interest loans. For some of Irene's victims, the storm left an all-too-familiar scene in their flood-prone neighborhoods. One couple who live in the problem-plagued Myers Grove section of the town of Deer Park once again watched helplessly as floodwaters from the nearby Neversink River inundated local homes. While water poured in, emotions boiled over. And I'm very frustrated because they think that people down here are low lives and this and that. We've been called every name under the sun. I'm not dirt, I'm not dirt onto the politicians or whoever else. I'm tired of being treated that way. The houses have been here for a while and I don't think we should have to have our houses destroyed because they don't want to fix the problem. Officials in the hard-hit city of Middletown, as well as other Orange County communities, are expecting FEMA officials to visit the area beginning tomorrow, giving uh, the region's political leaders the chance to make their case for long-term financial help from the federal government. Dry ice measures 109 degrees below zero. But it's become a very hot commodity this week for the thousands of residents still without power. Yesterday, people were lining up along Erie Street in Goshen to get dry ice from Orange and Rockland Utilities as a way to keep meat and other perishables from spoiling. The police station in South Fallsburg was another place where people could stop in to get dry ice and bottled water. Ed Bauer drove all the way from Calicoon to get the supplies that NYSEG was providing. A Sunday morning at 6.30 my power went out. All right, how are things, how are you, how are you bearing up? Not too good, got no water, I got a well, so water's out. Got no uh, uh, air, obviously, no, uh, uh, nothing. Kind of, kind of hard. <laughs> Making dry ice had been only a minor part of the business for all gas welding and supply in Monticello until the storm hit. Over the past couple of days, their machine has been humming, turning liquid CO2 into solid pellets and a near non-stop clip, more than a thousand pounds in the past two days. Company salesman Shay Lawton says it's been a struggle keeping up with the demand. Our machine is capable of 100 pounds an hour, and yesterday we were at every bit of that to, to keep up with everybody that we could help. Um, we stayed as late as we needed to to make sure everybody got what they needed to get through tonight. And again, this morning we were we had stuff made before we opened so that people could come and get it right away. And we've been able to handle a lot more walk-in today where yesterday we had to get everybody on a list. There aren't too many places in our area where people can purchase dry ice. Fred Spages came all the way from Newton, New Jersey to buy five-pound bags for the Sussex Elks Lodge. Uh, the only act in town so far as I could find, you know, and uh, a friend of mine had come up yesterday and gotten some ice and uh, told me that I could get some dry ice up here too, and so here I am. The region's three utility companies continue to put customers back online, but it could be the weekend before all the outages are repaired and everyone has electricity restored. Keep clicking back here at Record Online to get the latest information on future locations for the distribution of dry ice and bottled water. In other news, sentencing has been uh, set for November 21st for Richard Giga, the former Wawarsing Rehab Center client who pleaded guilty to killing a security guard and wounding a nurse last October. 25-year-old Richard Giga pleaded guilty to charges of second-degree murder and first-degree assault and is expected to draw a prison sentence of 25 years to life. Giga admitted to fatally stabbing security guard Lee Wood and attacking nurse Carrie Reynolds while driving away from the Renaissance Project Rehab Center in her car.
Gega was captured in the Ellenville area about 14 hours after the incident. Should more have been known about Richard Gega's violent tendencies? Reporter Michael Novenson will have more in tomorrow's Times Herald record. And there will be things for you to do this weekend if you're looking for a brief escape from a, the cleanup after Tropical Storm Irene. Times Herald record arts and entertainment editor Timothy Malcolm previews this week's edition of 845 Scene. Thank you, Tracy. And this week on the 845 Scene show, well, the Hudson Valley is still reeling from the effects of Tropical Storm Irene, but that won't stop the Hudson Valley from having some fun. There are events happening this weekend, like the Wall Street Jazz Festival in Kingston. We'll tell you where to go for that and where you can see some of the best jazz music in the region. Also, Calicoon Fine Arts is getting out of here. We'll tell you where they're going. And there is an exhibit featuring one of the most amazing painters of the 20th century. We'll tell you who that is, where that exhibit's going to be, and when it will be opening. All that and more on this week's 845 Scene Show. Until then, this is Timothy Malcolm. Back to you, Tracy. It's not something uh, we want to see after what we've been through, but thunderstorms are expected to pass through the region late in the day tomorrow. Thursday will be partly cloudy with a good chance of showers. The highs will be up around 80 degrees, becoming partly sunny on Friday, with temperatures topping out in the mid to upper 70s. For breaking news involving storm recovery efforts, keep clicking back here at Record Online and read all about what is happening throughout the region in tomorrow's edition of the Times Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.